What's up, people? My name's Timmy Joe. We make videos about the computers or the Xbox computers, whatever, what have you, here on the internet. And oh my goodness, oh my damn, what a good response to this video. It warrants a, a follow up for sure. A lot of unanswered questions, a lot of Xbox fanboys thinking, hey, you clickbaited me, you didn't make your own Xbox. Isn't that silly? But Jesus, look at this. 216,000 views and it's been less than two weeks that is by far one of my most viewed videos uh very successful tons of new subscribers hello to all y'all in case you didn't see the last video you could check it out here but uh, essentially i made my own xbox i don't care what you fanboys say i shoved a uh, amd 2400g ryzen 5 apu and an itx motherboard and a power supply some ram some hard drives all in the chassis of the original Xbox through, well, the second generation, I guess, because it has a few things are different. It has HDMI or the original, whatever. Anyways, into an Xbox 360 chassis and uh, basically kept the footprint to the letter except for what everyone dubbed the Red Ring of Death. Isn't that awesome? But uh, this thing has no Red Ring of Death. It's actually running fairly smoothly and I have some benchmarks for y'all comparing it to a 750 Ti one of the OG awesome original you know still plays video games today budget uh, GPU options something you could pick up for fairly cheap uh, I did a review on that fairly recently so I've got fairly new benchmark numbers to compare it against do apples to apples as, as much we can but uh, you know maybe you have some questions about this like does the uh, the front button actually work? Hell yeah, it does. I put I had to modify it. See, watch. Pew. There we go. I had to modify it a bit uh, to make it work, but I used an original like a, a computer button, like from a, a computer chassis, uh, and and put it behind there and made it so that the you know action of pressing it will turn it on. There we go. Makes a little bit of noise to start up, and then it gets quiet. Uh, and uh, maybe you're wondering about the thermals or um, whether or not I'm going to start a fire with the PSU being open in there. Well, everything's been secured very well and the uh, power supply in there, although the t you know I took the, the casing off of it, it uh, I put a little fan on the heatsink since the last video. You see that here? But uh, it's all shielded in there with some plastic that makes it so that you know it's not going to start a fire it's not going to do anything it's a fairly uh, i think it was like a, a four or 300 watt power supply and this thing's t doing a hundred a buck 50 buck 60 if that uh as you see here on my uh, little meter at, at load so uh you know it's, it's it's got a tdp that's way lower than 100 watts and it does it will go to 150 if you're really pushing it so keep that in mind uh but i actually solved the thermal issue just by cutting back on the overclocks and you know dialing back my voltages and stuff like that uh, originally in the in the first video i was a little worried about the thermals and i was actually considering uh and that's why this video is a little bit later than i wished it would be um, uh, I was considering putting a different cooling solution in it. It's got the Wraith Spire in it now from my Ryzen 1700. No, the APU doesn't come with the Spire. Uh, and uh, it's got the LED one and everything. And I, I made it work. There's two fans in this thing. One very, very tiny chipset uh, fan from an old computer, old motherboard that's on the power supply that's really just there for, I don't even know if it's doing anything for peace of mind to me, but the Wraith Spire is shooting all of its air onto the VRM out of all the exhaust vents that are pre-existing on the Xbox, and uh, I've controlled the cooling. It generally stays under 70, 75 degrees, and uh, I had to get to, you know, I was really hoping to get to a, a, an awesome space of like 1600 megahertz with the CPU overclocked, but in the end, the settings are as follows. I kept the cpu the 2400 at stock because i noticed that it does a it has really good xfr 
it boosts itself to 3.9 gigahertz all the time as long as it's not really warm and uh, if it's going to do that anyways why would I apply a 3.9 or 4 gigahertz overclock uh, you know, if it's getting to those speeds all by itself. So I left the CPU alone in the BIOS and then I worked on the GPU side until I got to 1580 megahertz at uh, 1.3 or 1.28 uh, graphics voltage and the SOC voltage is at 1.245. Uh, anything more than that, I would eventually crash this thing after an hour or two of gaming, which... Uh, you know, it was understandable. I've got a lot crammed into this thing. So, you know, there's some questions answered. Would I like to put a better cooling solution on this? Yes. Will I? I'm not sure. Because as it stands, I'm getting 90% of the performance I want out of it, 95%. And that extra 5% isn't going to be worth, you know, me buying an $80 CPU cooler, like a knock to a low profile or something, and then retooling this to, you know, to work. It's working very well right now. I think it's pretty cool. Let's save, you know, some mods for later or maybe for another project. So um, that about covers it, uh, except for, I guess, um, you know, did I do my original goal? I, I said originally that I wanted to do it better. No, I didn't do it better. I'll admit that. Uh, number one, let's talk price of this damn thing. Okay, an Xbox, uh, it costs $242 American right now. Uh, to get an Xbox One S, like even like the upgraded one, not the X, but the S. That's dirt cheap. Now, this is a computer, mind you. It'll do your Word. It'll do your PowerPoint. It'll browse the internet. It'll watch Netflix. It'll do everything computer-related better than the Xbox, even if there's some multimedia capabilities and web browser capabilities. It's just a joke compared to a real computer. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, actually even video edit, I wanted to mention, like this is a full on like core I seven equivalent CPU, uh, you know, 800 plus in Cinebench. That's, that's freaking a plus that's a core I seven. That's high end performance from like two, three years ago for seriously, this matches the performance of, uh, you know, stock of a 4770 K or something like that. So that that's awesome. But it, Get, it'll tally itself up real quick. So like, hundred and you know forty for the CPU, hundred for the um, motherboard, one sixty for the RAM because that's just super expensive. And uh, you, you could go with a little bit less expensive memory, or you know with the twenty uh, two hundred G. But uh, you know this is what I've got here: sixty dollars for the SSD, twenty for the games drive, twenty for the Dell PSU that I had to rip out of an old system that I, I went out of my way to buy, and twenty dollars for the Xbox shell. Not counting, you know, taxes or fuck all. We're, we're at $520. $520. We'll say easily this is a $600 system. Now, you could cut it down and maybe get it to $480, something like that. But it's expensive. So did I do it better? No. But keep in mind, you could buy that Xbox and some really low-end, you know, laptop or, or computer and probably spend more money than this that does it all. So that's pretty damn cool in my books. So let's get to some benchmarks. That's after all, probably what like most of you are here for. Some benchmarks. And what I did was I compared it to the 750Ti. Uh, I recently did a review on it and it was running in my Core i7-7740X system running at five gigahertz with 32 gigs of RAM and an NVMe drive. Like th this thing had every advantage in the world okay, to do better than the GPU component of this. So let's see how it fared out, and when we come back, I'm going to, uh, you know, compare it. We'll, we'll talk about the comparison, and we'll also just go over all of the foibles and problems I had with this along the way. So cue the benchmarks, Demi Joe. <sighs>
Okay. Did really well. Super well. I'm impressed. And, uh, you know, once you dial in the settings for this thing, uh, pr pretty awesome. So, uh, some things that I didn't mention in the little thing there. Um, number one, I ran DirectX 11 on this all the time. I ran DirectX 12 on this all the time. So, uh, that's one thing I didn't mention in the benchmarks. A little bit of an advantage on DirectX 12 for AMD stuff. So, you know, but they were pretty damn close. Now, I would, you know, want to game on the Core i7 with the 750 over this thing. But are you going to pair a 750Ti with a high-end, you know, i7 processor? Probably not. So stick this into an equivalent system, you know, like uh, uh, of the time and, you know, worth of money. And this is very, you know, looking very, very awesome. Looking very, very good. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention was um, th this was overclocked. Uh, in, in the review so uh, you're looking at overclocked results from both so it fared out really impressively and uh, super honest opinion here this system the the Ryzen APU in general you can game almost every game you can play every modern title on this thing and at some point you're gonna you know get frustrated a little bit and it's you're gonna have to go with the lowest settings but it will do it it will do it, and that's a huge uh, achievement considering no um, Intel CPU at this point has integrated graphics that will do anything close to the graphics performance of this. And, you know, going back a few years on other AMD APUs, they were basically crap. They were limited to eSports titles at best. Uh, this thing will play modern games. It's, it's pretty awesome. So, uh, you know, impression, you know, being impressed aside... I did have a lot of issues with this thing, and I'll, I'll just go, go over them quickly. Number one, I was very worried about the thermals in the beginning, and that's why this video took a little bit longer. Uh, but it's going to take a skilled person, a skilled computer person, to get the most out of this. So for Joe Everyman that plops in and runs at stock settings, it's not necessarily going to run those latest titles it's going to take some overclocking to get that performance out of it. And I was looking at other reviews and seeing 1600 megahertz, and that was that magic number. I could not achieve it. This thing's running at 1580 megahertz on the core GPU core, stock CPU, and will work with this thermal situation. But, you know, if you wanted to put a really good cooler on it, it would do a little bit better. Now, uh, some other frustrations I have is that Ryzen Master just sucks. And there's no software that will overclock the GPU like MSI Afterburner or, or some, you know, there's some uh, AMD specific like Vega overclocking utilities or even Wattman does not work on this. You have to use Ryzen Master or use your BIOS. And some BIOSes aren't going to have enough settings to overclock this properly if you're getting a really low end B350 motherboard. So keep that in mind as well. You're going to deal with Ryzen Master and that requires when you turn the computer on from a cold start... Uh, applying an overclock every time it doesn't do it automatically and when you even when you do you're forced to restart and then the next time this thing shuts itself off all the way it's going to need that overclock applied so use your BIOS if you can and another thing is once I overclocked even in Ryzen Master the GPU it stayed at that high frequency set this to 1600 or 1580 it stays there. It doesn't go back down. Most overclocking, you know, overclocking on a, a GPU, it will uh, bring the the clock speeds down on the GPU, or you know, it, it'll do some turboing up to that that point. Nvidia calls it um, GPU boost. It doesn't do that when you overclock the GPU on this. So you, it ends up eating up more power than advertised if you overclock it. Because it will just set itself to 1550 and it's just always running at that speed as far as I can tell. Which causes more heat and more issues. So hopefully uh, you know, a software solution comes along like MSI Afterburner or Reva Tuner gets an update that allows you to do the GPU on this thing. That would make this perfect if I could just set the CPU in the BIOS and then uh, you know, hit up... Uh, MSI Afterburner and save my settings so that at Windows it just loads that overclock. I think that would be a lot better. Some BIOS updates or something like that. So, all in all, oh my goodness, it was a fun project. And I'd love to hear your suggestions for the next Xbox build or, you know, ColecoVision or, you know, uh, maybe an original Xbox, maybe something completely different. I'll come up with some ideas, but I'd love to hear your ideas below. And, um, you, know, you know, if it's good enough, maybe I'll do something like that. Uh, but on this channel, you're going to get 
overclocking the crap out of everything, old cool graphics card reviews, old hardware reviews, finding new uses for old things, and finding new uses for even new things. So hit that subscribe button, and uh, if you really like the content, I do have a Patreon, and I'm doing my best to try and pimp that. I know it doesn't happen overnight. Also, uh, Amazon affiliate links, if you're buying stuff anyways, come to my videos and go to the description, click on Amazon, and just go from there. That'll get me some money. If you, find, if you see a product I review and you want to buy it, come find that Amazon affiliate link because that would really help out. It's also on my website, timmyjoe.com. You could also email me, me at timmyjoe.com, if you have any old hardware you'd like me to review. Um, I, you know, I accept donations. That stuff's awesome. And I don't want all your expensive crap, your, your crap in your... Uh, of, you know, sitting in your back of your closet or underneath, you know, in your attic or whatever. That's the stuff I want. Some cool old hardware that I can uh, mess around with, play around with. But, uh, anyways, I'm at Watch Timmy Joe Instagram and Twitter, and I, I end the video, dude. End it. <laughs>